what made you look into pairing? Well, I guess for me, it was uh, before he, he started here. Um, I was in a team and what we really struggled with was uh, big pull requests. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so I was uh, tech lead at the time. So uh, I instituted a rule that you can't you can't put more than about a day's work of programming in a pull request. Well, what happened then was that people made like a daisy chase of pull okay. requests. <laughs> because oh, when they were cool. finished with a one pull request, then they just they started a new branch based on that yeah. pull request. And then you had like three or four. And, and uh, then I realized after a while that uh, to get people to work smarter, they have to work together. And then we started like, try to do reviews together instead of uh, uh, throwing them back and forth. Because it's, especially when you're feeling like you're busy and you're in, in a flow state, then uh, taking time to do a pull request is something that you usually do before or after lunch. Yeah. And, yeah. Then, and you probably have different priorities. We can just say it uh, immediately. We. We don't like pull requests and we, we never liked them actually. Um, but I think this is a nice situation when they, they, you, they create this change of pull requests. If you work together, that would never happen. Yeah. It's just, it's just a consequence of it never, of, of, uh, working together. You don't, you don't have to spend time on pull requests because the way the work is already done as part of pairing. Yes. And then, then you come over to the, we can talk about more that, but, but the rework is, uh, is, is much less. Um, I just have to refer to that, um, podcast with, uh, Dragon Stefanovic, is that what you mm -hmm. call it? I talked yeah. about the request, which you had, uh, last year, I think, which was yeah. amazing. He, he really put this into a good, uh, with science and, uh, everything, uh, research, but we have seen the same, uh, in our team. We spend a lot around, I think the pull request part, we spend around two to three seconds for each pull request. Yeah. That is. Uh, we have uh, some some alias to say uh, uh, create pull request and approve pull request because it's already yeah. done. Mm. Yeah, and I would I guess we could also say that we we use the pull request uh, now as pretty much like a compliance thing where we where it's it's uh, it's just something we do to show that there's been two people involved. Four eyes. Yeah. Four eyes. Yeah. 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 So. so, so yeah, so, 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 so I, I, I've worked in, I've worked in banks and other financial institutions and, and we've done similar things. Uh, one of, I, I think there's one techniques where you can remove some of those few seconds, <laughs> whether, whether yeah. it's worth it or not. I don't know. Yeah. yeah so we're, one, we're going to start to look into that as well. We want to yeah. reduce the waste. Yeah. So, so, so you can, you can do it with away with the pull requests. I, I'm with you. I'm not a big fan of pull requests. I think they have their place. I think they're good if you're writing a big open source project and you want to guard against people yeah. that you don't know. But not that's, to the guy that's next fine. to you. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I, I don't want to do that with the guy next to me. Absolutely. That's so, so I... Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, we see it. It really differs here what people like. Uh, but we, but I heard from, from one, one retrospective, one team, they came out from a retrospective and they say, we have so much problems still... Uh, we have to wait on the others' uh, pull request approval, and yeah. I was just like, "Oh, we never, we never do that because it's part of the of the process." And 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 it really fits into uh, the modern way of working. If if you, for example, are five or four uh, developers in one team, and everyone is working alone, and you want to do uh, continuous delivery and continuous integration, and maybe have several uh, several deployments every day. If all of these four are to create pull requests all the time for all of the small changes, the team will break down immediately because everyone yeah. has to break each other's focus and no one yeah. gets to know, gets to do anything. So, you know, I think in order, as we say in the QCon as well, in order to do continuous delivery with such uh, rapid uh, deployments, you need to work together. Yeah, all it goes the, 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 the consequence immediately is just that people will create bigger tasks and when they create bigger tasks, then we can have another podcast of that. I, 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 I agree entirely. The, the, the other aspect to that though, I think that, 
I think surprise is probably most people that haven't tried pair programming is that working this way is also nicer. It's, it, it's, it's also the kind of collaboration that this way of working breeds is more, it feels more of a social thing. It feels more like of a shared achievement when we, when yeah. we're making progress and doing things. And that's much more personally rewarding, even exactly. to an old introvert like me. Yeah. And, and, and that's, I guess the most important thing for us is actually having fun doing our job. Yeah. If something's not fun, then it's really not worth doing. Yeah. Uh, and, um, it's, it's what we've seen as well is that, uh, I've always been considered an introvert and, uh, and a lot of developers are introverts. Yeah. Uh, I guess. But uh, as we've progressed and we've changed the culture, we've seen that there's, uh, um, uh, introvert does not mean antisocial, basically. Indeed. <laughs> so, so it's, yes. it, it, nothing builds community, uh, in the team with psychological safety and all that as actually working together. Yeah. Uh, and we, we, can, we, have, we can back that with data from the scientists as well, from the SIMTEF. They say that it's not, as Ola say, it's not e nothing better than to build psychological safety than working together. So yeah. we, we can say that with uh, number as well. And we can say a lot of things with numbers from SINTEF, which is pretty cool. Uh, e example, if they inter the, um, the in um, interventions, no, when you're interrupted, interrupted. Yeah. Yeah. If I, if I'm sitting programming alone or in isolation, as Dragon call it, is sitting in isolation and someone interrupt me, it takes around 15 minutes to get back into flow state. Flow state yeah. is something that everyone wants. And if you do that three, four times an hour, then uh, you don't get to do anything. But if you're pair programming, then you're in flow state uh, all the time. Yeah. And, and it's also like a um, buffer from the out outer world. So we don't do anything else, which is really important. If you're sitting alone, you will check email, you will check Slack, you'll do stuff, other stuff. If we are programming for three hours, we're just programming for three hours. That's the only thing we do for three hours. Yeah. And like, that is all. And that is many times forgotten when you compare two people working together and, when, and you compare them both uh, programming by themselves because this interruption part is so important. And also then the other parts come along with knowledge sharing and uh, catching things early, big, big, better quality uh, and so forth. I guess part of the issue with getting more people to do a lot of the things that we're talking about now is that uh, it's not always uh, logical that it's a better way of working. Uh, if we go back to um, ITIL that we talked earlier, they there they want big releases because change is dangerous. So if you say yeah. ITIL change manager yeah. that we want to release 10 times a day, um, yeah. they're going to lose their hair. Uh, that, 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 we have to rewind a little bit there uh, in 2011-12. We had one person flying down from Tromsø, which is in the weather uh, north of Norway, and he was the release uh, manager. So he, he, he was taking, he was <laughs> deciding what everyone should do when we had releases. It's kind of a, it's a different world now. Now we have yeah. five, five minutes from commit to production. Yeah. I do, there's, there's such a lot in what you've just said. I, I just, I just want to unpack some of the things, some of the those properties, the values of, of, of pair programming that, that you called out there. The, the flow thing, I think is one of those subtle things that people miss. Nearly everybody that's kind of come, me, me included before I'd done pair programming, I was nervous about being able to maintain my concentration when I was working with somebody else all of the time. Yeah. But as you say, the reality is, is that we, we are more concentrated, not less. We, we, we are more effectively concentrating on what it is that we're doing. And if you and I are pairing and oh, I'm having a bad day, you're going to pick up my slack a little bit and you're going to be one, giving me a social pressure to improve, but also just making progress without me. If I'm not, <clears throat> you know, helping me along and, and, there's and one, vice versa. One important thing in, in what you're saying there is uh, that we see is the switch who is driver and navigator who, who is coding and looking, uh, yeah. frequently. So. When we are two people, we switch every 10 minutes. And we, if you're three or more, uh, we switch every seven minutes. And, and we see that if, if uh, this 
because that's uh, when people are starting pair programming, there's maybe be a senior or an architect or something like that. He is showing a junior yeah. for, for an hour and that is not pairing. Yeah. So, so if we are putting someone new into our team, we're doing this rotation, uh, either if it's a junior or senior or whatever, we're just going directly into our rotation. And then you're focused all the time because you know, it's not more than 10 minutes, then it's your turn. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so you want, you want to make the most of it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, so the, the other thing that I, I, I think that you, you touched on that I always think is often missed by people that haven't tried pair programming is the kind of micro learning, the, the, the kind of tiny things that you pick up from That's your cool. pair, that yeah. key combination in your yeah, preferred yeah. IDE or some, some quirk of the design or where some useful piece of behavior is or all sorts of tiny things that, that we learn from one another all of the time That's to cool. the extent that I have never seen teams learn as quickly or as effectively without pair programming as with it. No, it's baked into your daily work. That's the, that's yeah. the main thing. It's, it's not waste. It's not something you'll do in a session later or something you write up to learn, or it's just part of your daily work. Yeah, so yeah. The, it's the uh, kind of funny example there is that uh, right now we're four people in our team, four developers, and everyone has a different uh, keyboard and uh, key map setting. Yeah. And now uh, I, I think uh, we have worked together long enough so we can switch between all settings in like two seconds. When yeah. we just pairing. Yeah, just reduced. Yeah, because yeah. what we used to do was that we switched computer, which works great as well. We had some aliases. We used them when we do remote pair programming, where we just, uh, uh, I guess the alias, I think it's part of all my set shell, where we just write EWIP, whip, and then git push. And then we yeah. just. So it takes three seconds and then you're on. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, we try, we have a really cool concept here, we think. Right, which we call the waste clock. We, mm -hmm. we, we came up with uh, ourselves and we start this waste clock all the time. And every, because everyone wastes time, you waste time, uh, the manager yeah. wastes time. I just walked uh, by, by, by a meeting room with 20 people, I guess, <laughs> half of them are wasting their times. And yeah. but quite, with developers are wasting even more time, I think, because uh, when I started here, uh, we had a Maven build that took around two minutes. Yeah. Um, and I was used to Quarkus from my other job, which took seconds. And I asked, we can't wait two minutes on every build. Mm -hmm. And then the answer was just, this, this is how the world is. And then, uh, the other guys are sitting with, this is just how the world is. And the other teams are sitting with just yeah. the world and everyone is wasting these two minutes. But the, when, when they're working by themselves, you kind of accept that. And the managers and tech lead, or the leaders and everything, they don't know anything about it. So they don't care. But when you are two people sitting on waiting this team, the first time maybe it's drinking a little coffee and it's okay. But next time it's just, uh, oh, we have to fix this. Yeah. And then you start to fix all these things and you get, get faster feedback loops. And in the end, everyone, everything is much faster. And the only uh, mm. downside is that you get, uh, become a feedback junkie. Yes, absolutely. So and, and, and th that's, that's the other thing, another one of those, th those you know, small, perhaps less than obvious advantages is the tiny improvements. So these don't have to necessarily be huge things. It doesn't have oh. to necessarily be build refactoring, but just shaving a few seconds off here and there, you know, a, a tiny change. Let's not do it like that. Let's do it like this in future because, because this will be more efficient. Those kinds of changes add up and make, you know, they really are the, the kind of fuel of continuous improvement, it seems to me. Yeah. And fun as well. Yeah. I guess one example is, uh, in our build is that, uh, uh, we, we had a build pipeline that we, uh, a CI pipeline, uh, uh, since, since we do have pull requests, uh, for compliance, we have branches, uh, uh and. Earlier, we used to build CI on branches, branches on CI, <laughs> branches on CI. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and that took maybe three minutes, four minutes. Yeah. 
but that was still three or four minutes we sat around waiting. Yeah. And then we were like, we do, we run the exact same tests locally. We push to the branch. It takes four yeah. minutes and then we go to Maine and it's the yeah. same again, took four minutes. And then we just agreed, oh, we'll just stop doing it. But if you were working alone uh, and you had to go to your team and say, guys, I don't like that we build uh, build our uh, pipeline on, on our branches. It's just four minutes of waste. Yeah. Then you get a lot of pushback. Yeah. yeah. And that this is a consequence of working together as well, because we have so good control on everything we do that we don't never ever have any merge conflicts. So yeah. the, like the need for branches, uh, almost uh, nothing. And yeah, as Ola said, then we just cut this uh, branches build on CI. It's not, uh, it didn't give any value. So we, we always look on all these small things that doesn't uh, give value. And as you said, when you add all this stuff up in the long run, then you really get the good effect, but that that is hard to measure and it's hard to view and uh, it's hard to tell. You have to like experience it, I guess yeah. maybe it could be better to measure it, but uh, it's, it's difficult to show the long run effects. Yes. Yeah. So, 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 so we started off by saying, you know, what, what the situation was a little bit before you started doing this. So, so what were the results afterwards? So, so, so what are some of those changes? Where, you know, whether you've got the data, you know, if you've got the data, great, but, but, but just subjective, if not, what, what, what's changed now? How have, have how are things better now than they were before? Uh, I guess, uh, uh, on the defects side, we have very few defects in production and, uh, uh when we do, it's, uh, usually, uh, it's, it's pretty obvious where that, where, where the fault is yeah. because it usually happens after we put something into production. And since it's, uh, it's a, a minimal change, then we know where yeah. it is. This clip was taken from my podcast, The Engineering Room with Dave Farley, a monthly podcast with some of the brightest minds in software engineering. You can find full episodes on all your favorite podcast platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Amazon Music. Your support helps us to bring the, you these regular episodes, so please leave your positive review on your preferred podcast platform to help us to continue to grow and bring you great guests and their insights. Thank you very much for listening.